Yo, what's up, Skull? What's up, y'all? What's up? Oh, you guys are funny, you know? Jason. Hello, how are you? So we were just talking Hamlet at the other table. We shall discuss it this one. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I'm, I'm, you guys always got fired from your jobs. I mean, you guys get fired from being bug exterminators. You're all wow. Like, oh, Hamlet to bug exterminators. Yes! <laughs> I love confidence. I can feel this one. You guys got fired from everything. You were farmers and horse people. And, and you know, Every time we get fired, we are more convinced the world is crazy. <laughs> That's how it works. How many guys did police officers? You guys didn't even go to school. You guys didn't even go to school. No, no, we did. We did go to, we did go to police academy. Remember right. when they shaved our heads? Yeah. That was police academy. In fact, we filmed that at the Los Angeles Police Academy. I have my question. When, when Lieutenant Stone, what was the funniest thing that he got mad about? Like, what was the funniest thing that like, you saw him get mad at you guys? You know, my funny thing is when he stepped, it was when Goldar and Rito stole your motorcycle and that giant thing stepped on his car. That's funny. <laughs> How did they get the car to be like that anyway? Oh, you just, you have a double car. You have a car that's already been flattened industrially at a junkyard. So you go to a junkyard and you go, that kind of looks like the car that we have. Let's take that one and maybe ship it. And here's another thing that happened. I remember you guys had the, um, it was like, the, it was like coal, like Andrew Grove, like winter time time. And you guys had to water his plants, okay? Uh -huh. And then you, you know, he had to wash his plants. He said, "Wash these are my favorite award-winning plants." And then there was it was in the field, and there was this monster that came and heated everything, and they all melted. And right. I really pissed off with you guys. I gotta say, some of Lieutenant Stone stuff was actually some of my favorite. It 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 was some of the stuff that had the least amount to do with the main plot line. Why was it there, really? It was really there to give both the skulls something and another building power. But some of that stuff was extremely funny because of it. Like there was. Uh, one of them were supposed to take the test to be private detectives, and there's uh, there's an attack on Angel Grove. That was so funny. I, I watched that footage. Like, that's hysterical. Trying because these people are Bolt and Skull are not test takers to begin with. You know, so you take the guy. You take. It's like watching a monkey try to pick up a spoon that you have no opposable thumbs. <laughs> Yeah, what were you when the monkeys happened? What were you when the monkeys happened? What were we doing? We were doing Hamlet, actually. <laughs> to bring it back full circle. You know, I got a lot of questions. You know, I don't know why, but I'm the one asking the question. That was somebody else asking the question now. What was I mean, you got, got right before a uh, skull? I was a Ford parts driver. I drove parts for a, a Ford dealership. Um, my dad, my stepdad, who was called my dad, uh, was a mechanic. And it's out of high school, I did not have the grades to get into college. Okay, so I took a job working for the auto parts, you know, driving around. And I was auditioning in my spare time and taking classes at the Lee Strasberg Theater Institute, becoming the best that. Were you doing plays too? Or? Yeah, I always did plays. That's the thing that saved, my, that saved me. I mean, I would be in jail or dead if I didn't go into theater. Because I was one of those kids that, you know, was always on the verge of getting kicked out of school. I, I did get kicked out of junior high. You know, who hasn't got kicked out of junior high? Junior high or two, <laughs> you know. So, that was, so theater was the thing that kind of gave me energy to focus on, gave me access to girls, which is really freaking helpful. I mean, come on! I got another question. What was the first day you met Bob? That was that was in the callbacks. So I auditioned the next day. They called me in to meet Paulie, and he was already in costume. And I didn't know that. So and he didn't ha he didn't have the ponytail off. He had his hair down. So he really looked like a biker dirtbag. It's gone, yeah, dude. He looked like Ben Franklin for a couple of years. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. So it's callbacks. That's the second time I met. And then Paulie had a background in theater too. So that's why he and I hit it off because he did all you know all the time in theater. This is the thing I was always wondering about both the school characters. Like they didn't do good in school, okay? And like to be a police officer, to get that like that good grades or something like that. You guys didn't even do good in school. <laughs> I don't know about that. I know a few cops that do. No, no, no. If you want to be an officer in the police academy, you really got to be sharp. Yeah, you, got you know, to be. but you know, you guys are like there's some officers. people that believe that cops are not always on top of their class. I don't believe that necessarily. But that's the thing. If you find something, it, let, let's talk real life, okay? Let's say you're a guy that always has problems in school and you want to be a cop. You will be really, free, you will be really dedicated to those studies. You know, so there's. It, it's not about being book smart or being great at math. It's finding what you believe in.
believe in. And then, if you're a smart guy, you'll pass. If you're, you're right. If you're dumb, you will fail miserably and not become a cop. And when you guys were uh, cops and Lieutenant Stone, I'm being honest, I'm not going to ask you questions, right? Like, like, well, it's me to ask you questions. What was the most important like, thing, the funniest thing when you got Lieutenant Stone mad? That was the funniest thing he got mad. I can't remember, to be honest, because he got mad all the time. I, I, you know? I, I, that really was like me asking you, tell me about the favorite bread you ate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was that free bread. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me ask this guy. This guy has got one. Um, are you still, you're still teaching, right? Well, no. Uh, I'm, I'm doing private coaching on the side. I'm, here's the thing. I was teaching while I was a grad student. When you're a grad student, you pay for your tuition by teaching college courses. Uh, so that's pretty much what I was doing. you know. And now that I'm no longer a grad student, I'm out of the university and back to acting full time. So I'm, I'm teaching on the side, but I'm only teaching acting. I'm not teaching you know, Shakespearean verse or rhetoric. Yeah. If you want to learn rhetoric, I'd be happy to coach you. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of things. UCSB has the only BFA program in the UC system. If you want to get your PhD, you need to go to uh, a big research university. So I knew UCSB has the, uh, that, that Bachelor of Fine Arts, and I wanted to work with that kind of undergraduate. As I was learning how to teach acting, I wanted really good acting students. Um, my family I was in California, and, it would have been not, and my family was growing, and I wanted to be near my family for a little while, because if I end up as a college professor, chances are I'll be back on this coast, because that's where a lot of the best schools are, you know, so that, that kind of has something to do with it. Plus, they offer me more money. Well, here's the thing, if you ever go to grad school, understand that your financial aid is a recruiting tool. Even when you're an undergrad, this is good to know. They will offer you money, and you say, oh, you know what, this school offered me more, then they'll have to pony up. And UCSB finally ponied up the most. And there's a professor there named Jody Enders, who, who was the editor of theater, uh, oh man, now, now I'm blanking because it's so early in the morning, of one of the premier theater journals. And she's a wonderful professor who taught rhetoric. And I was doing Shakespeare at the time. Rhetoric is a cool tool that bridges academic studies and artistic studies. So I'm like, dude, rhetoric, I would love to teach rhetoric. So that's, you know. Plus they had a great, this guy Simon Williams was a uh, top Shakespeare performance scholar practically in the world. Dave King is a best-selling author and he became my friend. So there was a great staff at, at UCSB. So. That's why I'm serious. Did you go to UC? Um, no, I'm in Santa Cruz right now. Oh, you see Santa Cruz? Ah, oh, clothing option. Yes, yeah. but financially good. <laughs> yeah, but so what are you studying? I'm politics and global economics. Oh, really cool. <laughs> really cool. I, I, I see you over there just itching to ask another question. Now it's a question. How many of you guys ever arrested anybody when you were a policeman? We didn't arrest anybody. We should be arrested. I mean, I mean, all, no. That's that's how you know the show is a fantasy and not a documentary. <laughs> People like us would not be running the streets. So you guys were like, cops would like, hate us. You guys, you guys didn't arrest the thugs. You didn't arrest anybody. I mean, you guys are police officers. Why did we arrest the, the, guy with the banana? That's right. We're trying to arrest the guy with the banana. We didn't arrest thugs because. We're crooked cops. <laughs> See you guys. Good chat. Right. Thank you. Okay, we're not going